Our videos feature voices and visuals created using AI technology, intended for adult entertainment. These depictions should not be mistaken for real celebrities. There is no endorsement, affiliation, or association with the personalities portrayed. These should be seen as nothing more than poor imitations. Viewer discretion is advised when watching this content. Titty sprinkles. The cultist steps aside and gestures towards Gurmley and Sharpen. Donald, you are to attack with everything you have at these two. At the end of your turn, make another charisma saving throw. If you fail, you are still under the cultist's control. I'll try not to enjoy this, guys, I swear. I go into a rage, and I'll be using reckless attack as I charge forward and attempt to drive my axe into Sharpen. Boo you motherfucker. Nat 20. I mean, ah, uh, damn it, guys. I got a high hit. Yeah, you really sound choked up about it. What's the damage then? 12 slashing. Well, that's not too bad. Plus another 12 slashing. Oh, shit. And plus two from my rage. Wow, that's 26 damage. It's good to see that math is not lost on you. Give it time. So anyways, Squeaky B, just how much did I just fuck you with all that ponage? I'm down. That was maximum damage. A little more, and that would have outright killed my character. Sharpen takes a massive blow to his side, knocking him down and unconscious, laying quite still, just as Bama is. Anything else, Donald? I'll end my turn where I stand, eyes fixed unblinkingly on Gurmley White Boy. Then make another charisma saving throw. A two means you're still under the control of the cultist. Joe, you're up. I look into Swole's eyes. I grip my sword and point it at him. I don't know what's got into you, but I can't forgive you for hurting our friends. I strike at him. As he had used reckless attack, you also roll with advantage. Your attack strikes true. However, the damage dealt is halved due to his rage. What did you roll? I did 12 slashing. This is going to be a long fight. I'm not done yet, though. I use action surge to take an additional action, and I strike again. And this time I deal. Oh, I deal five. Wait, that D10 was a two. Thanks to my fighting style, great weapon fighting, I get to re-roll my ones and twos. And it's a one. Fuck. So Swole will take an additional two damage on top of the six. We're so fucked. Joe, you should run. But one, do you get an opportunity attack? Yes, but at this point, we're sitting ducks here. Go and revive Barrack's character and stay away from Trump's. We only need him to succeed on a check to stop being controlled. Good point, Tiny Jew. I'll move 30 feet away from Swole and towards Bama. Moving out of his area will trigger an opportunity attack from Swole. Donald, take your attack, still with advantage. Count yourself lucky, Biden. Indeed. Swole unleashes a ferocious attack, but Gurmley was able to sidestep and move away. It's on you, George. I grip my quarterstaff tightly. You're nearly finished cultists. This will teach you for attacking this innocent man. Innocent? What kind of innocent man would mind control someone? Can you not see that this man is a cultist? He has poisoned your mind against us. We would never attack the innocent, burn homes to the ground, kidnap children, and steal the town's treasures. You need to open your eyes to the reality of my misguided friend and see the truth. Joe, I would like you to roll a persuasion check. George, make an insight check. George, your character would listen to these words and what he has said has stirred an uncomfortable feeling within you. You're starting to doubt the words of the cloaked man whom you've been defending. I shift uncomfortably on the spot and look towards the cloaked man. These people don't seem as evil as you portrayed them. Are you certain they're cultists? The cloaked man gives you a glance and you see him looking angry. Yes, of course they are, you stupid oaf. Do not question me again. Now go and finish off the small one in the corner before they revive him. Roll me another insight check. The way he appears 
does not convince you. He has become slightly deranged and you're now realizing that he has fooled you into believing these people are cultists. Although you do not know who they are, you are no longer convinced they are evil. And instead, you come to the conclusion that what they were saying must be true and that the cloaked man is indeed a cultist. I point my quarterstaff at the cloaked man, anger filling my every nerve. You liar! I will not be a pawn in your evil doings. I will rush towards the cleric and attempt to get him back on his feet. Having no healing spells or potions would mean you can only stabilize him. In which case, I'll need a medicine check from yourself. I do have a healing potion. Can I use that? Oh, really? I must have missed it when looking over your sheet. Hmm. Very well. Use an action to give him the potion and roll me 2d4 plus 2. I got five in total. And so Sharpen awakens with five hit points. I will then use one of my key points and use Step of the Wind. Taking the dash action as a bonus and moving away from the cleric and barbarian and move towards the gnome, ending my turn. I'm going to start with using half my movement to stand. A bonus action to cast Healing Word on myself, giving me another three hit points. And finally, I'll use my remaining movement speed to get away from him, not causing an opportunity attack as he has already used it. Nicely played, Ben. We go back to the top of the round, Barack. Let's have a death saving throw. You're on two fails so far, right? That's correct. One more and that's me done. Good luck. Holy shit, that was close. Hang in there, Barack. We'll help as soon as we can. The cultists can see you all making your way towards Bama. He shouts at Swolnald, finish the rest off. I've got the wizard. And he draws out a dagger and throws it at Bama. It hits. Racist. Bama. Away. I'm dead, it's, it's over. I fall to my knees as I see the blade make contact. The cultist laughs and runs down the corridor and out of sight, his last words to Swole. Hurry and finish them off. Donald, it's your turn. I move towards Sharpen and raise my great axe high, crashing it down upon him with reckless attack. That's a nat 20. It is. But you want to know what the real bitch of this is? I just rolled max stats. I think I just killed Sharpen outright. No fucking way. Seriously, look. Both D12s on 12 and my plus four, that's 28. You're on eight hit points and your max health is 15. Do the math. I've just split you harder than a cheap hooker. I'm sorry, bro. No, we lost Sharpen as well. I'm gonna end my turn there and roll that charisma check. You finally come out of the trance as you stand there with your ax embedded into Sharpen. Half his body slumped on the ground, the other leaning against your blade, his eye fixed on you, and you see the light disappear from it. What, what the fuck is going on? What have I done? I dropped my ax and back away in disbelief. No, I didn't do this. This isn't real. It's real swole. They're both dead. Because that cultist. You? I look at George's character. Help us take our friends back to the keep. Who else? I look over towards Gormley and see Bama's body. I stare at his tiny lifeless form and I scream out in anger. Picking up my axe, I begin smashing it again and again into the ground. Is this really it? Is there no way me and Barack can get our characters back? I'm afraid that is indeed the end of Sharpen and Bama. I was hoping the Christmas one shot would be able to help you accept that. This is a reality of Dungeons and Dragons. I'm not gonna lie, this does suck, but I'll accept the fate of Bama. They could just make new characters and come back though, right? Of course, death does not mean the end to playing this campaign. If you both would like to continue, you're very welcome to create new characters. Sounds good to me, but I think I'm done for now with this. I'll come back and join Donald, Joe, and Ben in our other campaign, whenever Alex finally gets it ready. What? Come on, man, don't leave us. I agree. We can't lose our only diversity link to a modern audience. We'll be labeled extremist Nazis in like five seconds. And as much as that would bother me. I'm still going to bail. Thanks for the games, guys. It's been fun. Dungeon Master, thank you for running these. See you later. A pleasure, Mr. Obama. Well then, Ben, shall we discuss your new character? Actually, Dungeon Master, I'm out too. Why? I've had a taste at being successful with a rap song, so I think I'll go and work on that for now. I'll look at coming back at a later date. Peace out! This is such bullshit. We're definitely going to need some diversity hires now. Is that the end of the session? Not just yet. We have a bit more to go over. Let's get back into it. A little time passes. 
the three of you take the bodies of the fallen party members back to the keep where they are laid to rest along with the other victims of the previous night. The three of you are sitting in the medical room. What the hell do we do now? I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to track down that son of a bitch and rip his spine from his fucking corpse. Then I'm going to find every last one of those goddamn cultists and burn them to the ground. Count me and swole. We need to avenge Bama and Sharpen. If you'll allow it. I'd like to go with you both. I feel responsible for this. I let that man take advantage of my naivety and two people paid the price. Let me accompany you and make an attempt at restoring some balance. Do what you want. I don't give a shit. It's fine with me. But what do we call you? My name is Grugge. Grugge Shub. This here is Swolnald Stomp, and I am Gormley Whitebeard. The door of the medical room bursts open, and in runs Escobar the Red. Lads, we've just received a report. Your cloaked man was seen heading east. I stand up quickly, picking my axe up, and begin marching towards the door. Let's go. You'll reach him faster with some horses. I've had them already prepared for you. They'll be at the entrance. There's also a few days worth of supplies for you in their carry pouches. It's the least we could do. If you ever need to rest up, remember that Greenest will always welcome you. Thank you, Escobert. I shake his hand and hurry on out the door with Swole. Come, Groge, let's make haste while the sun still shines. I stretch my arms and run out the door after the other two. You make your way through the town, the townsfolk giving you a smile or a wave as you pass. You have made a name for yourselves as the town's heroes. You reach the main entrance and find a guard, holding the reins of two horses, one black and one brown. Good day to you, heroes of Greenest. Escobar told me you were coming this way. I was meant to get you three horses, but one has had an accident and is unable to ride. Two of you will have to share a horse. He eyes up swole. Perhaps you should ride solo, my friend. I'm glad to hear there are only two. I would not know how to ride these horses. Guess you'll be with me. Then I say to Groge, slapping him on his shell. Take that track there to head east, but be warned. Bandits were also seen in the area. Reports say they were capturing solo and small groups of travelers. So best be on your guard. Let them try it with me. I could do with venting my frustrations. You each get on your horses and begin traveling along the path the guard advised on. The sun is high in the air and the bitter cold feels less as the sun's rays fill you with a little warmth. The rolling fields slowly becoming clustered with trees which become more dense the further you travel. I've never been so far from my home before. What are these strange tall structures? I say pointing at the trees. Is he serious? I hope not. Are you telling us you've never seen a tree before, Groach? A tree? So that's what it's called? Wow, such nice colors of green and brown. Probably best we don't talk much at this point, Frogo. But my name is Grog. Your name is shut the fuck up and leave me alone. No, it's Grog. I'd like everyone to roll a perception check. Swole and Gurmly, you both notice a sudden movement from behind the trees and manage to avoid dark figures lunging out from them. Grog. You fail to notice in time, and two figures grab you from either side and pull you back, off the horse and into the darkness of the trees. Help me! The trees are attacking me! Before either of you can react, something is thrown towards you. It hits the ground, and there is an almighty bang that echoes in the air. Both the horses become spooked and bolt forwards, taking you with them. I'll need an animal handling check from you both. Gurmly manages to calm his horse down quickly, whereas Swole is not so lucky. The horse has a sudden stop, causing you to hurl forward and fall into a nearby bramble. You are some distance from where you were ambushed. I make my way out of the bramble, deciding not to address what just happened to me and instead climb back onto the horse and continue following the track. Groge was taken back this way. Yeah, he was. And I continue moving forward. I speed up and bring myself in front of Swole. We can't just leave him. Watch me. And I try to get around Gormley. I grab his arm. He was going to help us chase down that cultist. And instead has got himself captured like a fool. If I go wasting time on him, I'll not catch the cultist and won't be able to get my revenge. Fuck him. You selfish asshole. He came with us to help right the wrongs he was part of. He was going to help us avenge Bama and sharpen our friends, one of which, don't forget, you drove your fucking axe through. I punch Gormley in the face. 
fine to go and find the cultist Stallone. I'll go and rescue Gro, which I thought we were over the solo bullshit, but you're as stubborn as ever. Go on, fuck off, and be alone or you never appreciated friendship. I move on back towards the area where Groge was taken. And I keep moving forward, saying not another word. Very well. Donald, we shall discuss in private what happens with you, but for now we continue on with Germless's journey. You arrive back at the location where you were ambushed, and although the ones who attacked are no longer around. They left much disrupted foliage in their haste, making it easy to track. You move with caution among the trees and can hear gentle music playing. You come to the edge of a clearing. Before you, you see several bandits in a small camp. A large cage sits at the opposite end and you can see Gorge being thrown into the cage, but he is not alone. A very large creature accompanies him. It has large horns on its head, a short white beard, a humanoid face, and hooves for feet. It's leaning against the bars, playing a lute. Well, howdy, stranger. Aren't you just the weirdest looking thing? 